reference angles. An angle's reference angle is the size of the smallest acute angle, T prime, formed by the terminal side of the angle T and the horizontal axis. So the best way to determine the reference angle for a given angle is to start by drawing the given angle, and I think the definition will make more sense here. So determine the reference angle for the following given angles. In part A, we have 150 degrees. So this angle is going to be the T from above. So that's just the given angle. Um, and so we can draw T is equal to 150 degrees. We can draw that angle in standard form. So it's like about like that. Like that, so that's our T. And then they're calling the reference angle T prime. So it is formed by, remember for every angle we have two rays. So it is formed by the terminal side of that angle T and the horizontal axis. So the terminal side, we can see here, uh, of 150 degrees is in quadrant two. And then we need to use either the negative part of the horizontal axis or the positive part of the horizontal axis. And so in this case, the negative side of the horizontal axis is closer, so I'll show you what I mean. So we can either use this side of the horizontal axis where there would be positive x values or the negative side of the horizontal axis where there would be negative x values. So for here, it definitely looks like the negative side of that horizontal axis will be, or the left side will be closer. So this angle here, the opening, um, we can determine how big the opening is and we'll call it T prime. And so we can look at, um, at how to determine um, the measure of, of T prime just by thinking about, um, and we'll see this a lot, where you kind of have um, a part plus a part equals a whole. So here we have um, the measure of T prime plus 150 degrees is going to be equal to the whole where you um, open an angle all the way uh, flat will be 180 degrees, right? It's halfway around the whole thing. Um, so T prime is just 30 degrees. And you might have been, even been able to just see that from, from the picture. So we have drawn in the reference angle and then given um, its measure there. Okay, so let's try uh, the next one. So now we're going to think about 4 pi over 3 as being equal to t. And for 4 pi over 3, we want to draw, it's especially important to draw what quadrant it is in correctly. So remember, like this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 pi over 3. Well, we know that 3 pi over 3 is uh, half of a full rotation. And so 4 pi over 3 is this angle down here. We just get better at that as we get more familiar with the unit circle. So here's 4 pi over 3. I'll draw in that initial side on the positive x-axis. And then where would its um, reference angle be? Well, the reference angle is going to be, again, starting on its terminal side. Okay, so here's its terminal side. And then where is, um, which part of the horizontal axis would it use um, for, for the other ray? Well, again, our options are this way or this way. And we can see that the left side of the horizontal axis is closer. So that would be the opening there. Okay, so this is our uh, T prime and how, how big is it? Um, and so this is where we kind of, we can set up an equation. Sometimes you can just see it and that's okay too. But um, this is where I think we'd want to set up an equation. So it looks like we have um, kind of uh, a part plus a part equals a whole again. So um, I would say we have T prime plus, um, again, half of a rotation is 180 degrees. And that whole thing is equal to four pi over three. So then I can solve for T prime uh, from that. And I can say, ah, well, this might have been more helpful to be just written as pi because we're in radians. So that'll just kind of keep everything in radians makes sense. So t prime is going to be 4 pi over 3 minus, well, pi can also be written as 3 pi over 3. So this is just pi over 3. So we have located t prime, right? Given our initial angle, we can draw that initial angle, draw in our reference angle, and then find the measurement there. So all angles except for quadrant quadrantal angles uh, have reference angles. So 
what is a quadrantal angle? Well, this is the kind of angle where, um, might just be easier to write it out, it's terminal side lies along an axis. So um, we would have, again, this is in standard position. So let's say here we're starting uh, with our standard position, the initial side on the positive x-axis, and then um, a quadrantal angle would have its uh, terminal side be um, somewhere right on, on an axis like that. So those do not have reference angles. You won't be asked to find reference angles for an angle, um, you know, that's some multiple of 90 degrees. Okay. And then another note is that an acute angle is its own reference angle. So determine the reference angle for 70 degrees. Okay, so we can draw the 70 degree angle in standard position, starting with its initial side on the positive x-axis. And then again, it's just most important to get the uh, quadrant right. It might not be exactly where it is. Um, so this is 70 degrees here. And I want to know uh, what my reference angle would be. So uh, I know what the reference angle is. I say, okay, start, one of the sides will be the terminal side of this angle. And then the other ray, right, for this angle is either going to be the positive part of the x-axis or the negative part. And I have to do whatever's closest, whatever will make the smallest angle. Well, the smallest angle would be using the positive x-axis. Ah, so... I need to use this part. Ah, and then I've just redrawn my angle. And so I can see that 70 degrees, right? If this was like my angle T, that just means like the given angle. And then T prime, I'm um, calling my reference angle. So here T prime would just be 70 degrees again. So we're just saying that an acute angle, which is really any angle in the first quadrant uh, is its own reference angle.